Now, now fifth, when you continuously call Puff, does that affect no. your relationships in Hollywood? I don't go. No, I don't call. I don't call him gay. I said. Let me read it. Let me read okay, it, read. Fifth. Oh, my God. Sorry I can no longer Just help you guys. Soon you will all be gay and happy. You are all now left under leadership of Puffy Daddy. Report to the nearest rainbow. Then the thieves. In theaters, oh, that's <laughs> He says things. He doesn't even know what he's saying. is like fruity. Every day, it seems like 50 Cent is gathering more solid evidence against Diddy, showing the world that Diddy isn't as angelic as he portrays himself in public. In his latest revelations, 50 Cent claims that Diddy slept with certain rappers during his career, his fame and fortune. To add to the craziness, he even dropped some names. This gossip just keeps getting wilder. The recent allegations against Diddy have shed light on the shady side of the music industry. No notorious for its cutthroat competition and deceitful tactics. The billionaire mogul is now under fire as more and more individuals come forward, accusing him of exploiting and manipulating artists. Some allege that Diddy used coercive tactics to pressure artists into signing contracts that included questionable content, alongside disturbing claims of exploitation and financial manipulation. Though the specifics of these contracts are unclear, the overall situation is undoubtedly troubling. The music industry has long been accused of engaging in shady dealings. In a recent video, Dave Chappelle tackled this issue, highlighting how the entertainment business exploits musicians by using intricate legal jargon in contracts. Chappelle suggests that these contracts are deliberately designed to be confusing, making it difficult for musicians to grasp the full scope of what they're giving up when they sign on the dotted line. To use your name and likeness and perpetuity throughout the universe, who the f could possibly know? what that means. This situation is especially troubling because many of these musicians are young and inexperienced, lacking comprehensive understanding of the business intricacies. Dave Chappelle emphasizes that a large number of newcomers in the industry unknowingly agree to these questionable contracts. This vulnerability arises because promising young artists often trust established industry figures who offer assurances. These artists, seeking financial stability and an escape from their current situations, can be easily deceived by false promises. And I signed the contract the way that a 28-year-old expecting father that was broke signs a contract. I was desperate. I needed a way out. And the same thing happened to one of the Bad Boys artists, Lil Jerome. Jerome, originally Stanley Jerome Childers from Akron, Ohio, is a male R&B singer who entered the music industry at the young age of nine. Over the years, he has collaborated with notable artists and producers, including Kelly Price, Mario Winans, Rodney Darkchild Jerkins, Faith Evans, Cheryl Pepsi Riley, the late Heavy D, Ron Grant, and Kelly Price. His journey began when he was discovered by Diddy and subsequently signed to Bad Boy Records, a record label owned by Diddy. Jerome made his initial musical debut on the Bad Boy compilation album titled Nothing But The Hotness in 98. His presence extended to the soundtrack of the film Belly, where he contributed with a cover version of Stevie Wonder's song Never Dreamed You'd Leave in Summer. In 1998, Jerome unveiled his single Too Old For me. Although the chart performance of the song remains unknown, it secured a spot on the Bad Boy Greatest Hits Volume 1 compilation album. Following this, Jerome's track, Dear Yvette, was highlighted on the 1999 Bad Boy Entertainment EP titled Emotional. Another one of his creations, No Disturb Sign, was also released during this period. Around the age of 13, Jerome parted ways with Bad Boy Records, marking a transition in his career journey. According to him in an interview on the unofficial Bad Boy fan blog, his reason for leaving the label was, well, it's just a mixture of the growing pains and the pressure of the music business. I had a nervous breakdown and it was in Puffy's best interest to not keep the project. Jerome's debut album was supposed to be released in 2000, but also, according to him in the interview on the Bad Boy fan blog about the album, yeah, I had about a good 13 songs ready for an album to come out before I had a little breakdown. Like I said, it was a mixture of growing pains, such as my voice and the mental things you go through when you go through puberty and so many other things. And then the pressure of the music business compounded that, and I had a breakdown. I just couldn't deal with it for that time. According to Jerome, he also had issues with his voice 
voice. He stated in the interview, yeah, the crazy thing was that the time when I started going through puberty and then my voice started acting up, I didn't have a normal voice change. Once my voice started to change, it didn't change normally. I was going through reflux disease also. So, you know, there would come times when I would try to hit notes and nothing come out. So it was driving the whole label and me crazy because we didn't know what was going on. At the time, we first thought it was the voice change, but we realized it wasn't the voice change. I had actually gone through the voice change already. They thought it was allergies. And then after they realized it wasn't that, they finally realized it was reflux disease. In a past interview with Bad Boy Dog, Lil Jerome shed light on the circumstances surrounding his departure from the label. When asked if leaving Bad Boy Records was his decision, Jerome explained that it was a combination of growing pains and the intense pressure of the music industry. He revealed that he experienced a nervous breakdown, and it was in Puffy's, Diddy's best interest to discontinue the project. To clarify, leaving the label wasn't his choice, but rather a consequence of challenging circumstances. And the album just never came out. And eventually I did have a nervous breakdown. Something else that Jerome mentioned was, there was a time that I was in the same studio as him, but I never formally met him. I think I saw him once, but I never formally met him. But yeah, I was signed when he was on the label and I was actually still signed when he died also. It was kind of a sad day for the whole label and definitely Puffy himself. It appears that Lil Jerome was grappling with reflux disease during that period. There were instances when he attempted to hit notes, but nothing would come out due to this health condition. The entire situation was perplexing for both both him and the label, as they were uncertain about the root cause of the issue. When questioned about why he was dropped, Lil Jerome recounted the same narrative, emphasizing the impact of his health struggles on his ability to perform and contribute to the label. Additionally, Jerome revealed that he started undergoing emotional changes, a common experience during puberty. These hormonal shifts coincided with a crucial phase in his career, as he was on the brink of releasing his album. Surprisingly, it seemed that Diddy, despite the circumstances, did not show much concern or empathy towards Jerome's struggles, which raised rumors that he may have done something wrong with him. Remember Carl Thomas? He shared a poignant account of his departure from Bad Boy Records. He mentioned that after the D of his brother, Diddy called him just a week later, seemingly without consideration for Thomas's grieving process. Instead, Diddy inquired about Thomas's return to the studio, indicating a lack of sensitivity to the artist's personal tragedy. A surprisingly large number of musicians who were once signed by Diddy have also accused him of luring them to do some suspicious actions. The rapper Jaguar recalls one such incident where some someone walked in on Diddy, making the new singer Christopher Williams go down on him. She walked in, the door wasn't locked, so she didn't think twice about just walking in. And when she walked in, she saw uh, Christopher Williams perform a fellatio. It's one thing to perform S acts with doors unlocked, but according to Jaguar, Diddy was even more unashamed. He didn't bother stopping either. Now, from what she said to me, um, it was disturbing because, you know, they didn't stop. One such unusual activity was also faced by Method Man. Method Man was sitting in a club in LA when Diddy approached him. Diddy must have been attracted to him because he then proceeded to hit on him in a rather weird way. Instead of talking some more and then inviting Method Man to his place like a normal person, he decided to send someone else to trick him into sitting in the car. Maybe this is like a game for Diddy and he enjoys putting these straight men in uncomfortable positions. Method Man wasn't the only straight man Diddy had sneakily tricked into an uncomfortable position. Another rapper exhibit has come forward with his horror story. Diddy invited him home for a good time and then took him clubbing, only to find out later that this club wasn't just an average club. Instead, it was a very explicit gay club. Exhibit was ignorantly trying to party and have a good time when someone pointed out to him that the men at the club were kissing. Exhibit was taken aback, but didn't think anything of it until he saw another man dancing in the middle of the club. That's when he realized that Diddy had tricked him and taken him along to a gay club. Diddy has never openly admitted to his attraction to men, but he's also unafraid of being caught acting his fantasies out. In fact, in private parties and events, he very openly acts gay. Seemingly, the list is just too long. Anyways, that's it for today. See you in the next video. Until then, goodbye.